Hello friends, welcome to today's flow. Go ahead and begin on your mat. We're gonna start in a wide-legged child's pose. Taking the knees about as wide as your mat, big toes together to touch, bum resting on the heels, and walk the hands forward as we sink the chest low towards the mat. If the hips are feeling tight as we begin practice, place a block or pillow underneath your head to help it meet the floor. Start to take some deep breaths here, feeling your stomach and your back expand with your inhales and completely emptying your lungs with your exhales. Take a little inventory of how your body is feeling at the beginning of your practice and be gentle with yourself as we do a lot of strengthening things today. Take things at your own pace and do what feels best for your body. On an inhale, ease the chest up off the floor. Walk the hands further from the knees and let the bum stick up in the air as you sink the chest back down towards the mat into a puppy pose, either resting the forehead on the mat or if your chest and shoulders are feeling open, you can take the chin down to the mat, keeping the hips stacked over your knees and the breath nice and deep in the belly. We start to open up the shoulders, the chest and the front body in this nice puppy stretch. Plant the elbows and bring the chest forward until your pelvis rests on the mat in Sphinx pose. Our elbows right underneath our shoulders, palms on the mat as if we're pulling our chest forward, opening up the front body and a little bit of a back bend here. Keeping left hand in front of you, reach right hand back for the right foot. Bend the knee as you take the heel towards the right glute. Feeling a little bit of a quad stretch on this side, putting as much pressure as feels good. As we open up and stretch the legs. When you're ready, gently release the right foot back to the mat and switch sides. Left hand grabbing the left foot or hooking the elbow on the toes to pull that heel towards your bum. Ease out of the stretch, releasing the left foot, and find your sphinx pose once more. We're going to take some tricep push-ups here, pressing our palms into the mat and lifting our elbows up until our arms are straight up into a seal pose. And then as we slowly lower the elbows back down, tuck the toes and lift the pelvis, finding a forearm plank. Coming through these two positions, about eight reps each, so pushing up lifting the elbows, slowly lowering, and then lifting the pelvis, finding that plank, and lowering back down. Push up through the triceps, lower, plank, and lower. Push up, lower, plank, and lower back down. Take this at your own pace, eight to 10 reps of each one, feeling the core nice and strong, and feeling those triceps work hard as well. When you finished your reps, find yourself back in a forearm plank and slowly walk the feet towards the elbows until you arrive in your dolphin pose. It's okay to keep a bend in the knees here. We want to focus on keeping the spine nice and long and pressing the head and chest in between the armpits towards the legs. Keep the breath nice and steady. This is an intense strengthening pose for the shoulders and arms. From here, either one at a time or both together, press the palms into the mat until the arms are straight and you arrive in your downward facing dog. With your hands about shoulder width and feet about hip distance apart, do whatever feels good here, maybe pedaling out the heels, alternate bend and straightening each knee, pressing the chest towards the thighs and keeping the spine nice and long. On an inhale, start to walk the feet towards the hands. Maybe challenge yourself and see if you can keep the legs straight as long as possible. 
tiptoeing ever so slowly until you arrive and exhale in a forward fold at the top of the mat. Let the head and torso hang heavy here. On your next inhale, come to a flat back about halfway up to standing, hands on the knees or shins, and exhale as you fold back down towards the floor. Take a bend in the knees, maybe grab opposite elbows. Take a little sway side to side, letting gravity pull the top of the head towards the mat. Bend into the knees enough to plant the palms in front of you and take that tiptoe walk back to your downward facing dog. Slowly, if you can, keeping the legs straight until they reach the back of the mat and then rock the weight forward until you come towards your high plank. You might have to adjust your arms or feet here so that the shoulders are stacked over the wrists and the heels over the balls of the feet. A nice long straight line from the tip of the head back down to the heels, core nice and strong, everything activated. Putting your weight on right hand and right foot, take a side plank, reaching the left hand up towards the sky, keeping the hips nice and lifted. You can challenge yourself by taking your right foot off of the mat completely, reaching it out in front of your body, giving the core an extra challenge, or stay right there in your side plank. Come back to plank, exhale through your chaturanga, inhale through an upward facing dog or cobra, and exhale back to downward facing dog. Give your core a little bit of a break here. Take a deep breath in and out before coming back to your high plank, bringing the weight forward over the hands. Nice and strong in your high plank here, feeling the core activate. Your back and shoulders are strong. This time coming to a side plank on the left, placing all the weight in your left foot and left hand, reaching the right hand up towards the sky. This time you can lift up left leg, which is underneath the right. Challenge yourself by taking that in front of your body or staying in your side plank if that's enough of a challenge. Come back to high plank, slowly lower as you exhale through chaturanga, inhale upward facing dog, exhale downward facing dog. Taking that sequence again, once on each side, bring the weight forward into your high plank. Nice and strong, everything active. Take side plank on the right, left hand reaches towards the sky. Maybe giving yourself the challenge of lifting one leg off the floor, keeping the hips nice and high, using those abdominals. If you have the leg lifted, coming back to your side plank, lowering the hand back to high plank, exhale through chaturanga, inhale upward facing dog, and exhale downward facing dog. Coming back to the breath, if you've forgotten it, inhale as you come up to high plank, and on an exhale, taking that side plank on the left, reaching right hand up to the sky, keeping everything long and strong, maybe lifting up the bottom leg out in front of the body, keeping the hips high away from the mat. Slowly lower that leg if it's lifted, come back to high plank, exhale through your chaturanga, big inhale through up dog, exhale into downward facing dog. Nice work. When you've taken one round of breath here in your downward facing dog, you can lower the knees to the mat, take that wide legged child's pose again. This time, if you'd like, if those arms are feeling very tired, tuck them underneath the chest as you take your wide legged child's pose and rest everything down on the mat. As we take a few moments here, this is a great chance to return to that steady breath that we began with at the beginning of our flow. See if you can match the length of your inhales and exhales and bring the heart rate down a bit. Hey. 
When you're ready, make your way back to your dolphin pose, taking your forearms to the top of your mat and lifting the tailbone to the air, walking the feet in as far as you can towards your elbows. We're gonna take some walk out and back from our dolphin to our forearm plank and back. So tiptoeing the feet out so that you lower the pelvis into your plank, then hinging from the hips and walking the feet back in to your dolphin pose. Each time you walk in, you wanna make sure you're activating that core and using that to drive the hips up. This is gonna to start to take its toll on your shoulders and your core. So focus all your strength there as you walk in and back out, taking this at your own pace about five times in and out. Just tiny little steps, keeping the core nice and strong and keeping the shoulders over the elbows. When you've done your five reps, lower the knees down, take a child's pose. Take a moment to come back to the breath. Take a few rounds of breath here. When you've had a moment, make your way back to your forearm plank. Setting yourself up for a side forearm plank, take the right forearm and have it be parallel to the top edge of your mat, palm on the mat, and the left hand reaches towards the sky. Again, we're focusing on keeping the hips nice and lifted using those abdominals and maybe challenging ourselves by lifting that top leg off of the bottom. Come back through center and take the same thing on the left, setting up your left forearm as the base, keeping the hips lifted and the feet stacked, and reaching that right hand up towards the sky along with your gaze. Come back through your forearm plank, walk the feet in and return to your dolphin position. I know we've spent a lot of time here. This is where all this strengthening and drills are gonna come into handy when we're practicing for pincha. We're going to practice putting one leg in the air, rocking the weight forward, and then returning it to the floor. Same thing with the other leg. Left leg goes high. We rock the weight over to our forearms and then return it to the floor. Take each leg three or four times. I know our shoulders are so tired already, but having this motion and rocking the weight is what's gonna get your body used to taking this position for forearm stand. Now, if you're working on your forearm stand and you feel prepared to do so, this is a great time to do it. Even though we've been working so hard and our arms might be tired, we're nice and warmed up to be able to hopefully find a little bit of balance here. If it's something you're not quite working on or you need some other help, I have a few videos on my channel just about Pinchamayarasana, this forearm stand, arm balance, and inversion. So I can link those down below. When you have finished working on it or whenever you feel ready, Meet me in your child's pose. Slowly come to a sitting position on the heels. We're gonna take a little shoulder stretch, interlace the fingers behind the low back, and push the fist down until your arms are straight. Taking the gaze up to the sky, maybe reach the fist down until it meets the mat, opening up the front of the shoulder and the chest and neck, giving it a nice stretch. And if you wanna take it one step further, you can fold the forehead towards the mat like a child's pose position, keeping the fingers interlaced and then push that fist up towards the ceiling. This is a really intense shoulder opener and stretch here. If you're folded forward, make your way back to a seated position on the heels. We're gonna take advantage of this shoulder mobility 
As we inhale, we're going to open up our arms wide like a cactus, elbows bent, arching in the back. And as we exhale, close off the arms and touch forearms together, curving out the spine. Inhale as we open up and exhale, bring the forearms together in front of you. Moving between these two positions at your own pace with your own breath. On your next exhale, let the hands float all the way down to the mat, coming back to a neutral spine, and then make your way onto your back on the mat, whichever way feels best for you. I like to curl into a little ball, hugging the knees, and then roll down my spine until I find myself settled on my back. With your knees bent, cross right leg over the left like you're sitting ladylike in a chair, and then let the knees fall off the left side edge of your mat while your gaze goes over the right side. I like to take my arm up to a cactus position and take my left leg to help push my knees further towards the floor. If it's a little uncomfortable of a twist, you can take a block or pillow underneath the legs to ease off a bit, but try to keep both shoulder blades on the mat. Slowly ease your knees back through center, uncrossing, and then taking the same cross on the other way, taking the supine twist on the other side. Gently ease yourself out of the twist, bringing the knees back through center, uncrossing the legs, and then bringing the knees in towards the chest. You can take a happy baby pose here by grabbing the pinky toe edge of the feet with the hands and then lifting the soles of the feet towards the ceiling, trying to fit your knees into your armpits and maybe rocking side to side, feeling the hips open up and stretch, keeping your spine on the mat. Whenever you're ready, hug the knees into the chest one more time. Give the whole body a little squeeze and a thank you before settling everything down onto the mat and readying yourself for your Shavasana. With your arms and legs lying flat on the floor, palms to the sky, and our eyes closed, we can take in and absorb all the benefits of the physical practice of yoga. This is an opportunity to find stillness in the body and give your body and mind a well-deserved rest. I encourage you to stay here in your Shavasana for as long as you have time for. This is such an essential part of our physical yoga practice and it's a great place to start a meditation practice. Thank you so much for flowing with me today. The light in me honors and respects the light in you. Namaste.